I'm back. Jesus, man, how long, does it take to, how long does it take to walk a fucking dog? Well, uh, one of them I had to walk twice, had to try and feed him. The little one gets really depressed when uh, my parents are away, so he didn't want to eat. Uh, I was able to get him to eat a little bit, but that was about the extent of it. Understandable. So, yeah. Also, I found where I had started. <laughs> I had microwaved some uh, broccoli and cheese right before I joined, and I was like, okay, I'll just talk to the guys for about eight minutes, and that'll be time, and then I'll go back and get it. And then, of course, it was an hour later, and I go back and find it. It's cold, and it's sealed into the package, so it's like, nope, not eating this. Sealed in? Mm. Oh, you it's mean broccoli like, and like, cheese. But, so, I mean, like, it, do you mean, it, like, coagulated? Yeah, I microwaved it, and then it, I see. Yeah, yeah, and then it got left in the microwave. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, okay, I see now. Hmm. Just now, like with you earlier, I I am my health is at zero. I have no hearts left, but I'm still alive. Some weird things have been happening. The uh, couple of creepers have gone off, and they're not leaving holes in the ground, which I'm fine with. But I don't know why it's happening. That is a little bit odd. Yeah. Yeah. Between that and the heart thing, I'm not really quite sure if there's some error going on or what. Yeah, I don't know. Well, as long as we continue to play, nothing fucks up, I guess. Cross our fingers. Yeah. Mm. A zombie just slapped me as I went to walk by. There went there, there went the missing heart. <laughs> 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 it was there all along. Yeah. So, I saw the... Uh, Pink and I saw the big wooden thing over there up top. What is it you're making? The what now? There's like a big wooden structure up there, up top. Up on top of the mountain? No, like up outside of our base. Oh, Pink, were Pink? you fucking with me? Was it... Yeah. Pink made that. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, you asshole. I watched him I watched him lay down the flooring for it. <laughs> oh, this whole time. How long were you gonna let that go on? You as long as I could possibly do it. Oh, that was pretty good. I I once again I trust my friends and they proved to be liars. <laughs> <laughs> he he was uh I was like, Oh, what's this come from? And I I, I either I assume this because of what Pink said, or Pink just outright said, Oh, Alex is building that. And then Pink started <laughs> to build you, 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 you I assumed spent so Alex long million, so talking like, about how much like... I hate that wood. <laughs> Wait, that is the birch wood? It's really pretty yeah. on my screen. Oh, that's you, the birch. Okay, you're using protector. a texture pack. I was going to say, yeah, because of my texture pack. That's why you didn't know it was birch, and that's, that's why I right. that it was Alex's. Oh, devious. Yeah, because on my screen, it's nice and shiny. Looks like uh, looks like nice hardwood floor. Yeah, so Pink was like, oh, I'm just going to build onto this. And I said, oh, man, it's going to be crazy when Alex comes back and he sees that you completely just perverted it into whatever you want. It struck me as bold of you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it now. Oh, this is all at the door. You forgot to put up the no soliciting sign. No soliciting? Why? What's going on? This what is all at the door. Oh. He's in gold armor. Now, Styling. I I had the option to turn uh to to make it to where the mobs drop their items, but it was already turned on. I I think, or no, it was already oh, turned yeah. off. So I left it alone. Oh well, hmm. I think it was. Hang on, let me go back into the. Oh yeah, because there he is. Hang on, let me kill him. Actually, I wait to kill him until I can check the options. Yeah, let me let me look and see what the cheat options are or whatever. Because I could swear that it was turned off. But we've been getting stuff from them in the past, so I don't know. Rarely. It might make it so that it's consistent. Oh, yeah, yeah, that could be. Uh, friendly fire off, coordinates off, days played off, fire spreads, yes. Uh, that's weird. One of my menu options just disappeared. Uh, uh, mob loot is on. And I didn't change it, I don't think, so yeah, that oh, should be well, there. Oh, well, that's just going to control, like, whether they drop rotten flesh. Oh, I see, I see. I wasn't thinking about it that way. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Mob griefing. That must be what that is. I turned that off early because I didn't know what it was, and it sounded bad, so I turned it uh, off. That's probably what's making the the thing, the whatever. The not. Fucking, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
You're right, because it'll be where people will set have a server. It's referencing like when people try to use creepers to get around, like when a server turns off TNT. Oh, okay. I can see. Yeah, I can see stuff like that. Um, as much as I don't like it when they fuck stuff up, that kind of by turning it off, that makes them basically non-existent threat. So I'm turning it back on. Yeah. I mean, like, it's not like I like having progress destroyed or anything like that, but it's like, I mean, it's kind of, you know, we might as well play in peaceful mode if we just turn off the enemy's ability to do what they do. Yeah. Alright, so Pink, uh, the one thing you might have been being honest about, are you in fact building a bathhouse? Is that what you intend? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> A facility I think we've all been in need of lately. Yeah. I, I guess you can build one, right? Do they have, like, bathtubs? Up and as soon as I walk up here, there comes a creeper to blow everything up. Nice. Yeah, that's that's what I get for doing the right thing, I guess. Who's trying to cook human flesh? <laughs> Okay, well, since he's not providing an answer, Pink is. It's Pink. It's all his fault. He's doing it. Well, I figured it'd be obvious. <laughs> so the longer I stay away, the more damage Pink does, huh? <laughs> <laughs> One way of looking at it. Alright, I'm filling in the hole that the creeper made, and then I'm gonna... I'm trying to make it to where our house has, like, a nice way of being able to get in and out without uh, having to jump up and down. You know, trying try to put some natural stairs and stuff like that around. Yeah. Make it a little bit nicer. We might uh, also... I mean, you can do it wherever you want, but uh, you might want to consider putting the... Uh, finding a different separate area for the... Um, for your garden, because uh, with no water here and, and no real sunlight, I don't think anything's coming of it. He's calling you uh, an idiot. <laughs> uh, slowly. It will grow slowly without water. I threw it down, honestly, just because I wanted to get something started earlier uh -huh. rather than later. I see. Do you have any spare stairs? Oh, I do. Okay. I have some like idea. <laughs> no, you don't. They're not for they me. look really That's nice on my screen. Fucking... That much is for fucking certain. They ain't for me. Are you decorating? I am. Well, nothing wrong with that. Oh, the place actually looks pretty nice. Oh, is that a challenge? Maybe I'll say it then. Oh. How you like that? Bet you weren't I expecting don't. that development. <laughs> oh. The betrayal. Yeah. Well, while we're at it, I fucked your wife. Whoa. Oh. That's impressive, considering I'm not even married. It required, may have required <laughs> some universe manipulation. Oh. You don't get up to that. That's that's you don't want to mess with that. It's dangerous. That's what they say. Aren't all the new I, I maybe even one of you guys said this to me in fact, uh, but I, I, I heard that are they not doing the whole like they're still relying on time travel now for everything for the for the yep. for all the superhero movies now? Okay. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Like, once they open the door to being able to do that, now that's just what everything is going to be. Yeah, Basically. and it, it didn't have to be. Someone from on high could have just said, and now we lock this away in the vault only in the only in certain situations. Yeah. But I'm not going to get as vocal about it as Ted does, but it's become obvious in recent years that, Ted, that Kevin Feige's whole idea of, like, I'm this master planner producer has kind of been blown out of the water by, like, no, you aren't. You know, it's just when people start relying on time travel, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. It's just an out. It's a day of smock enough for anything you want to do. Yep. I mean, isn't that, in fact, what? how they beat Thanos? They went back in time? Yes. 
There you go. And what and what I really what bothers me on top of the it's you know it's something that now the writer can use. It's something that anytime the characters don't use it, it's like why not? There you go. Yeah, it's like a Pandora's box. Like it. Like okay. Now that we know how to travel through time and change time... Okay, well, I guess, in fairness, Marvel's... The MCU's rule for time travel is if you go back and change something, you haven't actually, per se, changed it. You've just created an alternate timeline where your change took effect. Well, so that's guess... even worse, then. That's even more of an excuse. So then they can be like, oh, well, we have a whole alternate universe where everyone's still alive and everything's fine and perfect. And, you know, we can, we can have multiple universes going on all at once. Endless movies. Endless permutations. Now, in fairness, to a certain degree, that's what the comics do, but the comics are also kind of inherently about infinite storytelling, because Superman's been having stories told since 1939. Yeah, at least that's somewhat by necessity. Which, but, I guess, to be fair, maybe that's probably what they're doing for the movies, though, now. They want the movies to go on fucking forever. Oh, I have no doubt that Mar that Disney wants that gravy train to keep rolling. They're doing the same thing with <laughs> Star Wars. The, the, the sequels mm -hmm. didn't work out, but they're trying to figure out if there's still some way they can jockey this. Right. I mean, I, look at what they're trying to do with the Mandalorian. Take that shit off of Dave Filoni's hands and, you know, jo oh, John Favreau's hands if they can and make five different spinoffs of it that fit in more in line with the vision they intended for the sequels. I suppose so. Yeah. Do I have mushrooms? Oh shit, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> that was some good timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's... WSSR has died. Has fallen. <laughs> yep, that was the shift. That was the sprint key, not the crouch key. <laughs> Did you go flying off a ledge or something? Then is that what uh, happened? Yeah, I yeah. wanted to very gently edge, like hang on the edge, and no, I just j <laughs> sprung myself off of it to my death. That's great. Your character finally had enough. <laughs> <laughs> of what at this particular point in time I don't know, but enough of it. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Alex, I require iron. Give me iron. There should be two in the furnace. I need three. Well, <laughs> uh, you got the powers to materialize them from thin air? No. Well, better work on that. Help. I like how demanding it was. I require iron. Give it to me. I okay. <laughs> Hold on. Where are you? Uh, I don't know. Where I'm at, there's um, a lamb stuck inside a tree. If that helps. You're which I know it does. You're far away. Okay, I'm not doing shit. <laughs> You'll get back here when you die, inevitably. That is true. This is very I guess true. you keep your stuff. So I guess there's really. I guess that's kind of shitty, too, is that we don't lose our stuff, so there's no punishment in dying. Eh, we can change it later if we decide we want to get more adventurous. We do still lose XP. Yeah, but who cares? You don't think I care <laughs> about these two levels I've acquired since I started playing? Yeah, I've got four, which I'll never use, even if we find magic stuff. The cat has jumped up in my lap because she wanted attention, and now I'm doing that thing where that makes her mad, where I hug her like she's a teddy bear. Ha! <laughs> is, is that your way of making her move? Partly. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I've done that before, where the cat is like, well, I don't really... It's kind of easy to have her up here right this second, but I don't want to just shove her away because that's just mean. And so, yeah, you, you kind of kind of just... just... Like, in my case, I'll just pet her kind of aggressively. I'll be like, you know, kind of like, like, scruff the cat's head up. Like, oh, that's a good girl. And she's like, ah, fuck this. And goes away. Yeah. Oh, shit, this cat likes that. Oh, it depends on the cat, for sure. One thing I'll also do is I'll take the cat and deposit her on my bed. And she just looks around like, ah, oh, damn it, and leaves. Where do I pick up sand blocks? I've got another one. That's a good question. Yeah, let me deposit her on my bed, because she's over I haven't been anywhere near beach. As far as I'm aware, anyway. I... It must be stuff been getting blown up and you just walk over it without realizing it. I can't think of where else you'd be getting it from. Hello, I'm home. Welcome back. Which direction? Uh, I still don't see you. 
I'm over by the. Oh, other. you're right next to me. Okay, I'm looking up, trying yeah. to find you. Oh, uh, Mike. Yeah. I saw another one of those movies you've wanted me to watch. Oh, good. Which one? RoboCop. Oh, ho, ho, ho. all right. That's a big one. I'm surprised that wasn't the first thing you told me about. I love RoboCop. I've been telling everybody about that forever. You better tell me that you liked it. I did. Nice. Good, 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 good. You finally know half the references I made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a few that I anticipated, like, you know, I'd buy that for a dollar. And... Oh, of course. But I for... I was caught entirely off guard by, bitches, leave. That's, I didn't want to give that one away. That's one of the most famous lines, only if you're, like, in the orbit of the movie. Otherwise, you'd never hear it before. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, I, I laid, yeah, yeah. yeah bitches, leave. There, <laughs> yeah, because there's some RoboCop lines that everybody knows, you know. Uh, what's it, damn, now I've forgotten it for some reason, my brain. Oh, I know, like, every damn line. What What's the scene? Oh god damn it! It's the one that Murphy says both before and after he gets roboticized, and it's how the it's how Clarence Boddicker's thug recognizes him. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. There you go. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Um. So many even minor ones. I like that when RoboCop uh, gets him, and and then he brings him brings Clarence in, uh, only for the short time before he gets bailed out. Uh. You know, he spits on the desk and says, "Just give me my fucking phone call." Yep. Yeah, I, I love him. Go on, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I knew the basic plot structure of RoboCop in some sense, but I actually had it out of order. Uh, how so? What do you mean? I thought ED, I thought ED was like the final threat RoboCop had to face, and no, no. Mm. No, I, I, knew, I knew about the way that RoboCop beats ED in the scene he has to fight him, but I... <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that was like the start of the f of the third act or end of the second act, rather than like the grand finale. Yeah, yeah. In in what would have I, I like that it's a little bit of a of an expectation sur of subversion, which is that when you think it might be the final act, nah, it's dealt with really rather rather easily. I because there's the, the second one. He's like, I'll just blow you up and walk right past you. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And what I I I adore. Like I already like the way that knowing the way that Ed goes down. I love the execution of it in the movie. Where Good. It starts making, like, noises like a... Like, it starts acting like a t flipped turtle. Yeah, yeah. I I've heard it compared to a turtle, a chicken, a toddler having a tantrum. Yes, it's yes. Like, ah. it's, it starts <laughs> making toddler tantrum noises. <laughs> Why would that be programmed in? <laughs> 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 and like the, the the way RoboCop just looks at it, like is this this is supposed to be my competitor? Yeah, he, yeah, he looks at it kind of unsure there for a second. Like, uh, what do I do? Is this is this like okay? Well, I guess I'll just leave it then. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's oh, I could talk about that movie for hours. There's so well, much. Just... It's it's legit one of my favorite movies of all time. So I have a lot to say. Go on. Well, the way it's introduced tells you that the thing's supposed to be a poor make, but I love that how dedicatedly they just went for like, no, this thing is an absolute piece of shit. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's kind of in a way hinted at by the fact that it just malfunctions right off the get go, but you're not really thinking about it that way because it, 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 it's a very violent way that it malfunctions. Back, back in the day, those giant squibs when, uh, when uh, fucking uh, Mister Penny. Uh, gets gets blown the hell up, uh, you know, just completely destroyed by Ed 209. That was like, I, I I love when every now and then, like back on the forum, uh, some people were asking me about RoboCop, and one of them said I I was under the impression it was a kids movie, and my 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 response was God no, nope, <laughs> fuck no, about as I'm... far from a kids movie as you could get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's that. There's the scene where Miguel Ferrer does cocaine off a woman's uh, tits. I mentioned that specifically, actually, when they were talking about it. And I gave that as an example of how it is not a kid's movie. Yeah. Or the uh, scene at the very beginning in the police locker room when one of the woman policemen is just walking around with her tits out, you know. I'm surprised you noticed that, actually. The first few times I saw that movie, I didn't even catch that. Which is funny, because it's pretty easy to notice. But I didn't. <laughs> well, the, I remember... the director said... No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I remember the, there was a few people I've seen talk about how, like, movies in the 80s, like, it was a guarantee if it was anything above a PG rating, and sometimes even with a PG rating, it, you were going to see some nudity at a guarantee. It was just like a thing you expected in the theater was some was nudity. 
Yeah, it's a pretty common thing back then, yeah. It's kind of hard to find an 80s movie that doesn't have stuff like that. Yeah, that's above PG. Right, yeah, you're right, right. Uh, some of them even, uh, I've seen some PG-13 movies, Titanic's one, but obviously that was more artful. Yeah. But uh, I've seen some PG-13 movies. Uh, the movie Critters 2, which is a horror movie, as one would guess. A very fun one, too, by the way. It's a lot of fun, that movie. Basically gremlins, it, it, but, you know, different setting and so forth. About some space monsters coming and terrorizing a small town. Uh, that one is PG-13, and so my parents probably assumed that it would be perfectly safe to rent for me, but uh, they didn't realize that... Since it was non-sexualized, kind of, they had a, a girl just completely bare topless. Even kind of felt herself like, huh, I have tits. And it's mm-hmm. like, wow, yeah. Well, it, 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 there's a reason for it, actually. It's a, it, it's a shapeshifter, space alien, good guy. And he comes to Earth, you know, as, as part of a pair of shapeshifter, uh, shapeshifters to, uh, to deal with these critter creatures. And uh, he can't find, a, he can't find a, a shape that he, that he likes. He, he can't find a shape that feels uh, natural to him, you know, a good fit. And uh, at one point, he's going to change into a guy. The guy says, no, 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 don't change into me. And he, he to defend himself, does the only thing he can think of, which is to hold up the Playboy book that he's looking at to defend himself. Like, nah, nah, nah no, don't look at me. And, and the guy, because he's in mid-transformation, he, he looks at the Playboy model and turns it to her. Oh. And, and then he's kind of like, oh, oh, I'm a chick. Oh, look at these tits. And he's like, well, all right, I'm going with it. And, and in fact, she does, in fact, go, like, more or less half-naked and, and walk away with the other bounty hunter to go and kill the bad guys. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. Critters is a lot of fun. And Leonardo DiCaprio made his film debut in the third one. Oh, right, and he's super ashamed of it. I would be, because only the first two are good. Yeah. I've never yeah. heard him actually talk about it. He, he's actually specifically addressed it. I think I've heard that he did talk about it, but he was like, it wasn't very candid, like, oh, you know, this, that, or another. It was very much the sort of thing of, like, I hate this, don't talk about it, move on, or a fuck you. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Which, I don't know, that, that reminds me, uh, makes me think of, uh, of course, James Earl Jones passed away yesterday, not to date the video, but I don't care, I'm dating the fucking video, but... Uh, That's kind of, uh, I like that, actually, looking back. I think it's interesting when they're dated. Yeah, but James Earl Jones passed away yesterday, and naturally when a guy passes away, people are going to pass around quotations, unless he had nothing to say, and James Earl Jones had things to say. But one of the most famous James Earl Jones quotations that was getting passed around a bunch was, you know, I view myself as a journeyman actor, I view myself as still just being a novice, and I think that's the best way to do it. I don't ever see any role as above me nor beneath me. Oh, that's cool. And I, it was just, he then said, like, I don't really think of myself as having a best role. I don't think of myself as having a worst role. I act. And I just find that funny to think about in contrast to, like, Leo, who I just said, you know, Critters 3 considers it his worst role, doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's a thing with a lot of people in horror is that, uh, I, I guess I shouldn't say a lot because off the top of my head, I can't think of examples, although I know there are several of somebody who was in a horror movie, and then they, you know, they look back and they're like, ah, well, yeah, I've done some really good movies since then, but I just start somewhere. But then yeah. you have people like, every now and then you got somebody who, who's like Johnny Depp, who, who yeah. I've mentioned this before. Yeah, Wes Craven said, well, I wanted to bring you back for the final one, but I was worried you'd say no. And he's like, I would have loved it. What are you talking about? I would have I would have done it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, has Matthew McConaughey ever talked about Texas Chainsaw Massacre? 3? Oh, that's a good example. Him and uh, Renee Zellweger. I don't think they've ever mentioned it. Not that I've ever heard, at least. Has Viggo Mortensen ever talked about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, 4 or whatever? Oh, God, what one was that? That was 3. That was 3. I didn't see oh, it, God, but that was him 3. and Matthew McConaughey? Um, yeah, he, well, he was in 3, Matthew McConaughey was in 4. It went oh, 1, 2, right. 3, and then The Next Generation. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger were in The, the Next Generation. Which I heard was awful. I hear that three is actually pretty good, but it came out really badly because it was like an editing fuck up, like like a lot of like trouble between the studio and the director, that kind of thing. Um, but then I hear that four was just like a stupid, like guilty pleasure type of movie. Yeah, a text, I heard it was a comedy, which is already bad territory, right? Uh, the second one was a comedy, and I didn't like that. The movie was fine, but I didn't like that it was a comedy, because the first one is, like, legitimately, possibly the most effective horror movie ever made. Like, legit, it's worth that discussion. And so the second one, I thought, like, this is... Why? Same director, too, I think. I think. Uh, but then everyone else loves it, so, yeah, who am I to say, I guess. Yeah, Tobe Hooper's a weird dude. 
I'm pretty sure it was him for the second one, I think. Uh, it was, I believe, those two and Poltergeist, which, of course, everyone knows. Well, I shouldn't say everyone knows. That's very uh, presumptuous. Yeah, everyone knows about this dispute, at least. Um, when I watch it, I am fully of the, of, of, the, uh, of the impression that it was a Spielberg movie. It doesn't feel at all like Toby Hooper, and it feels everything like early Spielberg. Um, but beyond that, I don't know anything else that Toby Hooper has done. Or Tobe. I don't know if it's Tobe or Toby. I think it's Tobe. No, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, weird shit. Yeah. But more RoboCop. Talk more about RoboCop. Yeah. <laughs> what is, I've been wanting so long for you guys to see that. And the closest I've come so far is Addy, who said that he saw why it was good. It was good, but it wasn't his thing. And I didn't even realize at the time that a lot of it was probably lost on him because it's so deeply ingrained in American culture satire. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. I think... I think Addy, Addy, I think would appreciate corporate satire because he rather vocally despises corporations. But RoboCop isn't just like a flat "corporations are bad" sort of satire because Miguel Ferrer and the old man aren't really that bad. It's Dick Jones that's a piece of shit. I uh, I've heard different uh, thoughts on that actually. Miguel Ferrer is basically just you know he he's he's. Less so Miguel Ferrer, I, I, I guess. He, he's ultimately, I, I suppose, the, the, the best of the three. Uh, well, no, the old man is pretty... The old man, is, is he's, he's passive, he seems nice, but I've heard the comments that basically he is an example of, of corporate culture and that he doesn't... Like, he doesn't care that, that Kenny just got blown away in front of him. He's like, oh, well, when can you start production on the next Ed 209? Like, like that... Oh, mm -mm. shit. Hang on, my game's lagging. Ah! I'm out. My game died. Oh, no. That's not good. I'm going to fire it right back up, but probably not fast enough for you guys to still be in. I don't even think that would work, but... Mm -mm. But... No, he gets... The old man gets angry when the when ED-209 guns down Kenny. He does. He does. Uh, he's not you know, as he says horrified it's... as he should be, but that's Miguel Ferrer's job in that scene. I mean, that is true. Ferrer just interjects immediately, but but uh, it, I, it's funny that, like, literally, Kenny's body is over there still smoking when, uh, like, like uh, the, the, you know, the line is, I mean, again, I know this movie so fucking well. He says, uh, you know, he says, that is just a temporary setback. It's a glitch. The old man gets up. You call this a glitch? And, you know, he says, like, I'm, he says something like that, like, I'm very disappointed. This is going to set us back weeks or something like that. It, it could be subtle, it could be unintended, but I get the impression that that's basically him being like, I don't care that this guy died. We're going to, production's going to be screwed up now. <laughs> like, like his body's back over there, like, just over the shoulder. And he's like, like oh, man, this is going to, our production's going to be uh, slowed down now because of this, this uh, unfortunate mishap. That's how I, I take it. Yeah, I mean, him being dead, that does remind me of one thing I did find really funny, is that, like, Miguel Ferrer, as soon as it goes down, shouts, Somebody get a paramedic! And, I'm like, glad you picked up on that. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> and, like, this Kenny dude, his torso is practically non-existent. He's, he might as well be a pair of legs, a pair of arms, and a pair of, and a head sitting on a table. Yes. Yeah, he has been shot, like, literally something like 40 times with very giant, like, grenade-sized bullets. And again, his body is literally smoking. Uh, I'm calling you guys back in right now. Um, his, his body is literally smoking. And, and, and I, it took me, like, probably a dozen times watching that movie before I got it. Somebody else had to point it out that, oh, how funny. He's, he's, he's destroyed. A paramedic isn't going to have any purpose at all. Like, what are you talking about? Call, call a fucking morgue. Call a hearse. But yeah, I didn't. I did not get that the first time through. Yeah, he's like, "Well, somebody call a goddamn paramedic." <laughs> he's he's yeah, he's been shredded. Um, what did you think about the part when? Uh, okay, as well as I know the movie, I don't remember all the bad guys' names. Uh, the you know the thug, the one who recognizes Robocop. What do you think about the, the famous scene? Yeah, what did you think so of that? That's like everyone remembers that. So the goo monster is actually the part of RoboCop that I saw long before the rest when I was a kid. Ah, okay, I can see why that'd be the case, too. What was it, the kind of thing where you had, like, disconnected memories, like you vaguely sort of kind of understood what was going on, but not quite, and only just nope. now you finally took context? You, you, you understood all the, the, whole, the whole time, you knew what it was from and what was going on? I did not know it was RoboCop at the time. I had uh, I found out later on by watching, like, a Watch Mojo Top 10 Videos, whatever nonsense. Because I was a teenager and <laughs> stupid, and <laughs> apologies to watch Mojo fans out there, but I guess you're stupid. But uh, yeah. what was it? <laughs> talking about the 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 splattering, the toxic waste incident. 
Yeah, yeah, and, uh... Watching that as a kid, I was like, what, the, the goo turned him into a zombie? <laughs> Which is, of course, not actually what occurs there, but nonetheless, he certainly looks like one. I guess he does, yeah, half-melted. And because I thought it turned him into a, a zombie, I didn't think of it as acid and it was a partially melted human being. I thought of it as, like, he got turned into some kind of fucking mutant. Oh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So when he gets turned into a liquid later on in that scene, <laughs> that confused the shit out of me as a kid. Oh, you saw the whole thing then? Wow, okay. I pretty well saw him go, like, him try to ro run down RoboCop. RoboCop fools him into going into the, uh, into the acid vat instead. Right. He comes out, he goes after Ray Wise. Ray Wise, don't touch me, man! <laughs> <laughs> and then the dad from that 70s show gets a windshield full of liquid human. <laughs> Kurtwood Smith. Yeah, I, I know, but I found it funnier to call him that dad uh, from that 70s show. I see. Because you mentioned Ray Wise, I thought you I thought you hadn't remember the name. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, am... I didn't remember Ray Wise's character name there. To be honest, if I was really on the ball with jokes, I would have said, uh, oh shit, what was his name in Twin Peaks? Palmer something. Ray Palmer? I don't know. Oh, because Laura the Palmer's Adam. the... Say yes. what, I think? I, oh, I said Palmer that's the Adam. Adam. Ray Palmer is the name of the Adam. Right, superhero. yes, Ray Palmer is the Adam. Son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> the Adam is a superhero, Mike. Uh, oh, I see. But he was something Palmer. And yes, yeah, because Laura, Laura Palmer's the daughter. Yeah, Laura yeah. Palmer is, his father, is her father. In the, is her, oh, whatever. No, I gotcha, I gotcha. It's actually one of the, um, uh, it's one of the many sad scenes of the first episode is when he finds out that she's died. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah, when, when played right, it seems like that can be harrowing. Yeah. There's, uh, I won't say much, well, I won't say anything else beyond, uh, that's one of the reasons why I love, uh, um, Tony Collett's performance in Hereditary. She has to react to something that is just unbelievably traumatic, and she does a fucking bang-up job. It's amazing. Yeah. Just, just the sheer, like, it sounds like somebody put a microphone to her and said, okay, I just, like, in, in murdered your family, here's the photos. And and her reaction is, like, that strong. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. The movie was good, but not great, but her performance was amazing. Yeah, but, my, my yeah. Uh, mom and sister watched, uh, watched it, and they were like, uh, nah. I mean, to the movie, but not to Tony, Tony Collette. Uh, can you define what they, like, what were they, you're saying they just didn't really altogether care for the movie, or were they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I, I, I like, it is now, I, I, it's, it's weird that I apparently discovered the movie just around the transition between no one had seen it, and now suddenly it's like this cult thing that everyone has seen, because when I first went to watch it, I couldn't find anybody really saying anything about it other than critics, but now it's like on all these lists and then everything else, so it's like, oh, well, I... I guess now it's like this huge, big, massively talked about like best horror movie ever. No, no, I would definitely not say that. But it was worth watching, and again, her performance was fantastic. But uh, talking about Kurtwood Smith as I was, he, uh, I, I, I uh, William Shatner mentioned this because he was in a couple of uh, uh, Star Trek things, Kurtwood Smith, and uh, Shatner s described him as the actor who stole the movie from RoboCop, and uh, I would almost have to say the same thing. Yeah. He was such a good bad guy. He's one of my favorite bad guys of all all cinema. He's pretty good, yeah. Just a just a just a sarcastic, evil, just mean son of a bitch. No redeeming qualities. Yep. <laughs> he goes to the he goes to the woman near the end, uh, the secretary of uh, uh, Dick Jones's office, puts his gum on, on her name tag or on her on her name uh, thing or whatever that's sitting on the desk. And says, uh, you know, yeah, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't have a lot of time, but, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe you could fit me in. And uh, I mention that because that's actually his wife in real life. They met on that movie, and now they're married. That is very, that is one of the cool. funnier ones of scene where Skis hits on a woman who is clearly disinterested. And then the two the mm -hmm. actors go on to get together. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. She she sells it, like, and she's just, she's in just for that one scene. She's like, hey, I was waiting for you. Yep. And he's like, you know, he kind of, I think he sort of like raises her eyebrows at her before walking away. <laughs> like, ah, oh, yeah, all right then. 
Uh, um, what would your what would be your favorite part of the movie, and what would be your least favorite part of the movie? Favorite Whether it be a performance or yeah, anything. Although I am most curious about specific scenes. If there's a certain scene you like more or less than the others. Uh, RoboCop walking through Murphy's old house is a, is pretty great. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. I thought you were going to say that's one of the worst parts, because most people, I guess, because people want nothing but action, I guess. A lot of people say that that's the weakest scene. Nah. They, they, I guess they don't realize that it absolutely fucking needs to be there, and it's actually very, very important and, you know, pathos-ridden. Yeah. I would say, like, if there's any scene that's like, eh, it's like, we could have moved on past, perhaps, like, the police locker room or something, where it's just the, like, there, there was an easier, simpler, there's probably a simpler, quicker way to say... The police are not happy with the current state of Detroit and are thinking about going on strike. Hmm. Are you referring to, like, the... I guess there's no one scene, so are you saying there's just too many scenes, too much time devoted to it? Uh, when Murphy first comes in into the locker room and it's his first day on the job. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I can see that, yeah. I, I wouldn't agree, but I can see the, I can see the argument being made. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't make a strong argument for it. Oh, and I definitely don't mean to undermine your argument altogether. Uh, it's just, it, it's see, it's difficult for me because I, I it, RoboCop is one of the few movies that I consider to be like, like really pretty much perfect. Like, like it's one of those movies to where it's not just because I love it as much as I do. I, I feel that objectively, it just did a really good job of um, uh, accomplishing what it set out to do. And uh, there's not a whole lot of movies I can think of that I would describe as just, like, perfect. Not only can I not think about anything about it that I don't like, there's pretty much nothing about it that I would change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for that reason, I guess I'd probably be the wrong person to say, oh, I, I agree, that was a bad scene. <laughs> you need somebody yeah. less biased. Maybe. But, uh, <laughs> what was I was going to say? Oh, well, Talking about scenes. Uh, oh. Yeah, I guess that was my picks. I mean... Other than that, oh, would you would you say then that him going back through the house that was your favorite scene? Uh, it might be uh, interesting. That's really interesting. Other than that, uh, I really like the first time he for the first time he stops a <laughs> robbery. Ah, uh, I was gonna say me. the fuck me scene. A <laughs> uh, little bit of trivia. Uh, if you remember, when he uh, when he goes to uh, the front register, uh, the front register, when he when he goes to the register, he grabs a comic book off the rack. Uh, that is a an Iron Man comic, and I guess oh. it is specifically, yeah, it, it's not only an Iron Man comic, but it's specifically an Iron Man comic. I think the issue where he first gets his suit, or something like that. I, I wrote oh, about that. Uh, that has to be a fairly yeah. rare one, even at the time of eighty seven. I would assume so. I, 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 I guess it was used particularly because it was like a little bit of an Easter egg. It's kind of like a reference to uh, Murphy getting his robot suit. Yeah, huh. Yeah, nice little detail. But yeah, he. Uh, that's another example that I gave to whoever it was that was asking me if the movie was for kids back on the forum. I was like, I, I, was, I listed the, uh, you know, I, I, well, obviously I talked about Murphy's death, which is about as graphic as it gets. It's a fucking slow motion shot of a guy's hand exploding from a shotgun. That 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 scared me as a kid. It was like, wow, holy shit. Um, then of course there's the as you said, there's Miguel Ferrer uh, doing crack off of a uh, or coke off a woman's tits. Um, then I also say, yeah, and then there's this one scene where a guy literally says "fuck me" about like eleven times in like as many seconds. Now I heard something, and I know you're a RoboCop guy, so you probably know this. But I heard that the re the the origin of the bitches leave line was apparently something that Miguel Ferrer and Kurt Wood Smith insisted on, because Paul Verhoeven was just referring to the prostitute actresses as bitches, and not in a not in a like mean derogatory sort of way, but like he honestly thought that was a, their official job title was bitches. You are and, correct. And Kurt Wood Smith and Miguel Ferrer thought that was so fucking funny that they insisted on it being like made into an official line in the movie that Kurt Wood Smith just calls them bitches leave. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Paul Verhoeven just he, he he I guess did not quite he's know Dutch. American slang. Yeah, you're right. Who's Dutch? Yeah, he he speaks with a very strong Dutch accent. Yeah, he uh, he he just assumed bitches was just you know just 
just a, 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 a term of affinity. Just, just it's just like calling a, right, yeah, it's just like calling a guy dude, you know. Except you know, for props to whatever, they're 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 bitches, yeah. They're, they're, it's just women are bitches, whatever. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just what they're called, and and I guess yeah, he he just he he, he like I I think it was like in the script or something like that. It, it said the bitches leave or or something very close to that. <laughs> yeah, and, um, yeah. I I don't remember the second part of this whether or not it was just completely uh, ad libbed or what, but I I. Think I think I read that it was like like I think I, I I do think it was Kurt Winsmith who was just like oh I want to say that I, I, I that's what I want the line to be and they're like yeah okay yeah why not yeah yeah he rings the doorbell oh I think that's champagne let me go get it he opens the doorbell there's Kurt Winsmith with a gun in his face he escorts him into the living room where the bitches in question are oh. still sitting and uh, yeah bitches leave <laughs> and they do before one of them says uh, oh gee are you gonna call me oh bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um one of my favorite parts in the movie it's so it's just one quick little passing thing it, it, it's it's like long forgotten when everyone thinks about robocop it's the scene where they're uh on the street interviewing people about the potential strike and, and, and there's a guy i can't remember what his name is on the screen but it actually gives him the title at the bottom unemployed person yeah yeah, yeah, he's he's like, oh man, I don't know, America, it's really tough. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, you know, nothing's free, no guarantees. <laughs> that's, that's literally what he says. Yeah, it's just such a great performance from just some random guy, just some like random like whatever like nine to five or who. Yeah, I'll, I'll play a bit part in a movie, sure, why not? And he does such a good job of being this weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, it's a jungle out there. Ooh. <laughs> oh man, yeah. God, like I said, there's, there's, I, I. That movie first became. I, I grew up with it. That movie came out when I was nine. First saw it on home video when I was nine, going on ten. It was like, oh my god, I've never seen anything like this before. This is crazy, and I'm sure my parents regretted it because it was about as hard R as you can get for that time period. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, I, I like, but I thought it was cool. Like, I, I, I just thought, like, oh, this is so neat. There's so much going on. And obviously, I couldn't understand most of it when I became an adult. That's when I got all the, 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 you know, all these, uh, all these things from like, you know, Frankenstein references. Uh, you know, the, the satire. Uh, the idea of, uh, you know, uh, uh, uh privatization. Uh, unions. Like, there's so much going on in the movie that I wasn't able to get as a kid. And so just like over the years, I've just become more and more and more convinced as the layers have, have become unfolded that it was like, this is like, to me, it is legitimately, I will argue this to anybody. I, f I find it's a legitimate masterpiece of, of a film. So, so here's I the have... funny thing. Yeah. When I can when I just, you know, a few minutes ago said, I finally watched RoboCop. You were enthusiastic. Like, Oh my God, that's great. What was your favorite scene? What was your favorite line? What was... Oh yeah. What... When I watched it, I also posted on Discord, Hey, I just watched, uh, on the uh, text Discord, Hey, I just watched uh, Robocop for the first time. Ted, the fuck is wrong with you? Why'd it take you this long to watch one of the greatest work pieces of satire ever? What nice. is the fucking problem? <laughs> I couldn't remember what Ted thought about it because Ted himself is from Detroit. So I couldn't remember if like, he saw it as obnoxious or not. I, my memory was that he liked it, but I, I, I could not quite recall. So I'm glad to hear that he's... Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, that that's cool. That's cool. What did you say to him? Did you just what what was your explanation for not having seen it so long? Just I don't think I offered didn't... one. I just went whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean you typed that or you just didn't even reply? I don't hang on. I I'd have to look at it. <laughs> I'd be curious if you just didn't even answer him. I I might not have. It was just so arbitrarily hostilely phrased that I was like, I, I'm not going to engage with it. Well, I think oh, that was his way of. That was. I'll stick up for Ted in that particular case. Why? That was not him saying you're. Oh, you're all right, Pink. A creeper just walked into my bathhouse. Oh, that's definitely not good. And now he's set to blow stuff up. Unfortunately, he did blow up, but he blew up with the water, so I think we're good. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Alex, in this particular case, I think it was more of a, le less shitting on you for not seeing it, more using as a, an opportunity to say, this is so awesome, isn't it? Oh, okay, yeah, here, here we go. I say, watch RoboCop for the first time. Good movie. Ted says, what the fuck? How are you just now watching one of the greatest satires of all time? <laughs> I, I respond, well, if you want to, you can sit and think about every good work of fiction you've never consumed. And to oh, Ted, gotcha. To which Ted responds, no such things exist. 
<laughs> yeah, I just You'll have to. Say, to... I know, buddy. I know. Right. You <laughs> have to when that kind of thing comes up. That's more like Ted. Um, <laughs> at some point, it doesn't have to be right now, but at some point, definitely uh, make it aware that I've been pelting you for the last 20 minutes with questions about how much, <laughs> how great is it? <laughs> <laughs> but... I want everyone to know. I do want to note, as I was passing over the movie thread, I did see something I like. With, uh, when James Earl Jones passed, it was mentioned in the movie thread, which, uh, by the way... Oh, like, that's... I, that, so I didn't that's even know we no had one. one. anything to you in the random channel thread. You know, I wanted... If it wasn't so late, I did that just before I was going to bed, uh, and uh, so otherwise I would have engaged when I saw a couple people say, oh, man, man you're, you're, you're late on that, Mike. I, I wanted to describe that I looked up and down for, like, literally about five minutes on the main general uh, thread looking. I was like, wait a minute, I just found out about this, so it's new to me. Like, I was five minutes away from when I posted it. I had just only just now read about it. I was like, oh, man, that's awful. And so when I went and looked at it, I saw that it had been posted. Like, that news was still, like, that article where I saw it from was eight hours old. So I thought, okay, well, then surely all the other guys have known about it. I just caught it really late. But I looked and looked and looked, and on the general thread, it, no one had mentioned it. So I thought, okay, I don't know how they missed it, but I guess I'll post it. And yeah, I, I didn't know there was a movie thread this whole time. I literally <laughs> didn't even know there was one. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, but I felt like an idiot, but uh, go on. Uh, either which way, uh, Grammar posted uh, one of the few good bits from uh, Big Bang Theory, where uh, it was an episode where they had James Earl Jones as a guest star. And Sheldon and Leonard are out at dinner somewhere, and Sheldon sees that James Earl Jones is also eating at the restaurant they're at. And he goes, oh my god, it's James Earl Jones, I need to go see him, you know? And Leonard says, no, don't. He gets people talk to him about Star Wars all the time, you'll just bother him, you'll just annoy him, you'll just make him mad. And Sheldon's like, yeah, people, whatever, who cares, I'm gonna go talk to him. And he goes over to James Earl Jones, and he's just very silently standing there, kind of with his hands twiddling. James Earl Jones looks up from his, you know, Chinese menu or whatever, and says, Let me guess. You want to ask me about Star Wars. Sheldon quietly nods. And you're aware that I do also have several roles in many other movies. Sheldon nods again. <laughs> but you don't care about those movies. You just want to ask me about Star Wars. Sheldon nods again. Mm -hmm. Well... There's something I always say to people like you. And his face gets real contorted into a pissed off look. I like Star Wars too! <laughs> and he breaks out this big, dopey smile with bright eyes. <laughs> like an excited child. Yes, exactly! <laughs> it's it's the, the simple, stupid joy of a guy like... You were in Star Wars. Why would you have childlike joy for it? <laughs> like James Earl Jones is acting like a fanboy for himself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see that clip. That sounds pretty great. That definitely sounds good. <laughs> Almost like, I can't wait to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've heard that show's really funny. I completely disagree, but every now and then I guess it's gonna, you know, a broken clock gonna be right once a day, twice a day, rather. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 a you few know, hours, I might think of one other gag I like from that show. Right. I mean, it could be funny, but as a lifelong nerd myself, it just, I, I, I hate that it just plays directly into every stupid, lame, tired nerd stereotype. Oh, yeah. bunch of, they're so fucking socially enfeebled. Women won't even look at them. Ugh. All they do is talk about physics. Shut the fuck up. That kind I of will say, in fairness, I think I've said this before, but I will say, in fairness, the Leonard character gets laid a ton. Which one's he? Is is he played by anyone? There's like the, there's Sheldon, <laughs> and then there's the guy on Roseanne, and then the other two no one talks about. Roseanne guy, the main one. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't, I actually don't think of him as Roseanne guy. I think of him as grown up kid from you know, Christmas Vacation. Oh, you would? That's right. I forgot about that. I forgot he was in that. Yeah. That's funny because whenever I see that movie with my dad, my my dad's always like, "Oh yeah, that's a kid from Roseanne." <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that goes to show who grew up with what, you know. Yeah. 
And sooner or later, there's going to be times where it's like kids are, you know, going to be saying, "Oh, where this stupid old Christmas movie that isn't funny?" That's that kid from the '70s show. <laughs> and that's when their parents will have to just beat them, just beat them bloody. <laughs> <laughs> you little fucker! <laughs> that's a you parent who has their power straight. <laughs> Oh, well, if they want to raise their kids right, that's right. They're going to have to do that. Comes to us all sooner or later. It might be unpleasant, but it's got to be done. I'll say mine didn't come at the end of a beating, at the end of a ruler beating, but uh, you do you. <laughs> yeah, you got lucky. <laughs> what was the context in which you watched RoboCop? Yeah. I wonder if my parents even... I don't know if they watched it with me all the way through. I would assume that they would have had to, but my memory... Like, I, I remember the reaction of, like, wondering, oh, man, should I be watching this? Like, I felt like I was getting away with something, because I basically <laughs> was. I, I I am sure my parents probably thought what a lot of other people do. They see the title, and, and they're like, oh, whatever, kids movie. The cover is Robocop stepping out of a car, looking gallant. And they probably thought, oh, whatever, you know, it's a good... Whatever, I don't know why they wouldn't have looked and seen that it was rated R. I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe I'm wrong. They just thought that I was, you know, mature enough to handle it, which I I guess I was because I didn't like go psycho or anything. <laughs> but I just I mean, I just remember, I mean, literally there there's a a, a, a cop gets shot like 50 times, which begins with a, a, a slow close up of his hand exploding. Yeah. Graphically blood all over the place. It's like, wow, holy shit. And I just I remember thinking I probably aren't supposed to be seeing this. It's funny how when you're a kid, you do get like that, where you're spooked. Like, oh, the, 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 the shouldn't be seeing it. And, like, I remember as a kid begging my parents to get me the three-pack of Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and Shaolin Monks. Mm. And saying to them, I swear I'll turn off, the, you can turn off the blood and the fatalities, I swear I'll do it. And my mom going, like, <laughs> you don't have to, it's fine. And then when I got the game, even though my parents told me I didn't have to, I still turned off blood and fatalities because I felt like I would st still somehow get in trouble for it. <laughs> you were very proactively, uh, uh, oh, what would be the word? Not necessarily censoring yourself, but uh, just being a good boy, I guess. You, you, yeah. you were, you were, you were, you were that uh, that committed to, uh, you know, to, to to doing to being a, a, a good son, a good child. Yeah. <laughs> and why not? And Hiding all of the crack I was smoking. Yeah, well, you gotta do that. Definitely. Yeah. It's just not the same thrill when people can see you do it. Well, yeah. I also... But, I would also think that uh, the Mortal Kombat, uh, you, you turning off the fatalities, uh, I, I think was to deflect from the fact that you were also a crack smoker. And and they, you know, you figured, well... You know, if if I do good on this, if I if I turn off the you know the fatalities on Mortal Kombat or whatever, my parents won't look at me any closer and see that I'm doing even more disturbed things. <laughs> <laughs> as long as long as they think that I'm doing good with the Mortal Kombat, they won't inquire any any more closely. They won't know about the crack I've been smoking, Mister Hitman. <laughs> That's still my favorite part, Mr. Hitman. It's the guy's brother in law, but he gives it, he still calls him a, his wrestling title. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that reminds me, actually. Uh, uh, and, and, Alex, uh, well, come here. Give come me here. a moment, just a moment, just a moment. Let me finish what I'm doing. Here. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Come here. Come here. Oh, what? Behind you. Oh, okay. Over this way. Yeah. Wow! Yeah! Cool! Oh, wow! It. This is really cool! You did do it! That's so neat! I have an idea. What's that? You got sand? No. You Damn. had it once or twice, but only a couple pieces. Right, I had a block of sand earlier. Right. I think there's a beach over to the uh, whatever direction this is. I don't have a compass. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go get some sand. Hmm. Alex has something in mind. That I do. I got an upgrade to your bathhouse. He might hate it though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, a willing a willing upgrade, and Pink, you're gonna be you're gonna be very distressed when you see it because it's it's what you don't want. Otherwise, you would have done it. Right. 
Don't let That's Alex true. tell you how things work. Uh, here's a piece of sand, the piece that you put in our, our base. So there's one piece I have. I'm oh, yeah. sand. All right. Oh, I guess I uh, just watched a pack of wolves tear apart a sheep. It was kind of messed up. Oh, that's, that's sad. Although now you can probably go harvest the meat. Indeed. Wool. <laughs> three meats to wool. What did you say? Three oh. meats tool? to wool. To wool. Oh, to wool. Okay. Yeah, I, I was. I, I like. I assumed that. Out of meat. It isn't very effective for using. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I was, I like, I was assuming that's not what he said, but I thought, well, what else could he possibly be, like, what could he have been saying? That makes no sense. <laughs> oh, I like the the neat like Lego block roof that you put up here as well. That's pretty yeah. cool. I just wanted to come up here and get a look at the surroundings. I'll I'll get rid of that dirt. Although now that I think about it, I should make a just in case we get lost or whatever. I should make a big giant dirt tower. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've got a bunch, and we're I'm near not a villager. Home. You find a villager? I think so. Oh, well, there's or a village not too either. far from our house. Oh, there is! Okay, I didn't know you knew that. I, I, I remember the last time we discussed it, we weren't sure. Have you guys gone to it? I no, haven't. I just see it on, on the other side of the river where I got the sand. Oh, I'll have to go visit it at some point. I'll wait until I have a rope to get some of their... to steal their cats, though. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Wait. rope, we need to... Oh, go ahead, Alex. I was about to say you don't need to, then I remembered, no, they actually come with pre-tamed cats, not ocelots. Yeah. Uh, what I was gonna say... What was I gonna say? Eh, it doesn't matter, I forgot anyway. Yep. Yeah. Why wasn't that important? It often isn't. I, I, I usually either ramble or talk oh, about... Oh, was it wrestling? Like, I don't think it was, believe it or not. Although that does bring up a question. Uh, and I guess, first of all... Uh, well, Pink, ah. when you were gone, was talking about... Oh, Cat. What's up? She stabbed into my knee to let me know. I want food, damn it! Oh. Why she now also sounds like she's from the Deep South is confusing. <laughs> I want food, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of a cat talking like that is pretty good. <laughs> Give me some damn food. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, there's a little baby wolf. Hi, little guy. He came out of nowhere. How cute. I Does meat attract these guys? Because if we want to keep him, he's standing here right, right next to me. Uh, meat or bone... Oh, I threw away a bone not too long ago. Shit. There's some in the chest, but you shouldn't throw away bone. Bone's extremely useful. He's... Let's see. I don't have to give it to him, though. I can lure him. And then he won't... Poor little guy won't get it in the end. I mean, by the end of the... Whatever, I know what I mean. It just sounded more sexual than I wanted it to. Nah. <laughs> nah. Um, Pink... Pink was talking about when you were gone about uh, he was speculating on the name Rhino with a Y. What do you think of that? As a name, just to have as a person. I I guess it might have been uh, Pink. Was it was it coming from the co the question I was asking you guys about wrestler names that you wouldn't be embarrassed about? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then Rhino with a Y. What do you think, Alex? I think that Pink's taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rhino. What, that, what is that guy's real name? Does anyone know? Uh, I knew at one point it... Um, I want to <laughs> say it's uh, something simple. No, it's not. It's Terrence. Is it Terrence? Are you serious? That's a Terrence. stupid name. That's just such it's a far cry from Terrence. Rhino. It's, it's like... I, I don't know. I, I can't think of a better example because that's already so bad. Did he become the... Rhino with a Y in WWE? That's when I first knew him. I uh, believe so. Okay, I think he uh, was... Because were they scared of Marvel suing them? Eh, probably. Yeah, he was Rhino with an I in ECW because ECW oh. didn't care. Yeah. And, uh... I believe in WWE he got the Y, and then I think when he was in TNA he kept the Y. 
but it was like R Y N O and not R H Y. Oh, that's so stupid. I thought the R H Y N O was already bad enough, but R Y or R I N O, like Reno. That's 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 what so the name stupid. I would expect for a Japanese stripper. Reno. Yeah. <laughs> You know, before I forget, talking about uh, wrestling as we, as we obviously have been, um, I did not know this until just recently that Joe Tessitore is part of WWE now. Yes, he has now been brought in as a commentator. Uh, he only just had his first Raw the other day, and people really like him. Who uh, the heck is that? He is the legendary co-host with Teddy Atlas of, like, the last, like, 20 years of boxing. He is a long-time boxing commentator. He's really, really good at it. If you've ever played the Fight Night games, he, he, along with Teddy Atlas, did their actual voices in Fight Night. And people always said, as, as well as myself, that that was a game, that, that's what you look at to, to figure out how to do commentary right in comparison to the wrestling games, which were, you know, he's, he's putting feet. his educated feet to good use. Thank educated you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Out of a grand total of nine lines? That's the one that we both jumped to from the wrestling games. Yeah. Maybe there might be ten, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, whenever you... Oh god, that's right. It's puppies, educated feet, and slobber knockers. I, I guess the puppies thing went away around the, the mid-2000s, but still. Uh, but yeah, by contrast... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Thank Christ, and I've always pointed out that it's so bizarre to have Lawler saying that. Well, we all know Lawler ain't into biggins. He's in her, he's he wants the littlest ones possible. <laughs> he wants little ones with fake big ones, because then that way he can get the best of both worlds. He gets like the grown up parts, but on wee little children. I, Allegedly. I, yeah, you. I'm not. I'm remembering the cat very differently than you. Uh, I actually don't really remember her. I, I, was she around for a long time? Like, I, I know of her, but I never was watching when she was around. It feels, it feels like it must have been a short time. It was, because she more or less showed up, showed her tits, left, Jerry Lawler left in solidarity, then they divorced, and Lawler was like, actually, I'm not that solid with her. Right. There isn't as much solidarity as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> he was solid around her, but not necessarily with her. Yeah, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, she was tiny and had nothing going on, and looked like, uh, looked, uh, she was barely 18 and looked younger, so. Oh, so she was not only super young, but she also didn't have a big bust? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I just would have assumed that she had big fake ones like everyone else did at that time. That was the, no. that was the era of the big giant plastic divas. Okay. No, the Sable hadn't come around yet, no. Oh, I didn't know that either. Okay, I thought they were completely, like, totally overlapped. I see. There might have been a small period of overlap, but I want to say Sable. I want to say Cat was in the same category of. Uh, uh, help me, chick you hate, Sunny. Uh, oh I say Kat yeah, was in that the same one. Category of uh, as Sunny, where she saw uh, Sable coming and went, "Oh no, I know where that's going." Ah, uh, okay, I would believe it. I'm so happy that Sunny is facing more or less the rest of her life in prison. I'm, I'm I'm very happy that her past. I mean, it literally only took like probably about twenty DUIs. Yeah, it only took twenty five convictions over the course of fifteen years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she she had. I th I think that there were times where she was actually on bail from previous arrests or yeah. convictions, whatever, and yeah. she got caught again. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was like, it, you look her up on Wikipedia. There was a time period period to where she was arrested like five times within like a month. Yeah. Yeah, just like fucking like breaking and entering, threatening people. Maybe not breaking and entering, domestic, uh, you know, threatening somebody. Again, multiple DUIs. And it's like, oh, I I'm glad that it only literally took her killing yeah. somebody before he finally yeah. did something she about it. She only needed to actually kill somebody in a drunk driving accident to get yep. any uh, jail time, you know. Yeah. What state was this? All that other stuff before? God, that's fine. Kosher. Yeah. We're good with it. No problem. What state was Where this? Are you Florida. Oh, I, okay. I think, I think, I'm almost sure it was Florida. The, the, the land sure of the Florida. wrestlers. Yep, that's entirely correct. Yep, uh, Savage died there. Hogan lives there now and commits all kinds of crimes that we aren't aware of. Yeah. Um, there was another person. Oh, that was weird. What just happened? Um, there was another person just recently I read about who was uh, in Florida and and also a wrestler. I don't think that he was like doing anything wrong, but it was. It wasn't Sid, was it? Was Sid from Florida? I would believe he's in there. Hmm. 
I, I feel like I just read about a wrestler recently who was on the news, or for some reason I just read about a wrestler who's in Florida, and I remember thinking the same thing you just said. It's like, oh, yeah, another wrestler in Florida. Florida, that's where they go. That is where they go nowadays, especially, because all the younger guys, they have to move down to Florida because that's where the performance center is. Yep. Oh, is that true? Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I guess everybody's in Florida then. Yeah. Dead, alive. Yeah. If you're a wrestler, you're in Florida. I remember uh, what was I was talking about the other day with indie guys. I was, I was I, right. I was talking with like Gog or something, saying that the uh, indie guys had uh, less incentive to stick with WWE even if they were being treated poorly because they knew they could just go back to the indies. And as an example, I just dumb found. I just dumbly said, like for instance, Adam Cole. If Adam Cole decides that he'd rather do shows at home without going to the performance center, then he could quit WWE easily. And I stopped and went. Wait, Adam Cole's from Florida. <laughs> you can just, you can just <laughs> go back home. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't Adam Cole... Uh, no, I'm thinking of Michael Cole. Who is Adam Cole? A long-haired gentleman, leader of the Undisputed Era, jumped to AEW and had the feud with MJF that was at one point the hottest thing in the company and then arguably killed the company's heat. That was uh, Adam Cole? Yeah, him and MJF. Okay. I don't think I've seen him then. When I think of Adam Cole, I, I guess I really do just confuse him too much with Michael Cole. I, I, I picture like a short, short-haired guy that does commentary, but I guess that's completely wrong. No. No, Adam Cole's long-haired wrestler and very skinny. I... Hmm. God, yeah, I guess I just don't know him then. I'm sure he was in several of the games. I probably just yeah. was like, hey, I don't know who this is. Overwrite. <laughs> uh, 2K19, at the very least, he was in. Uh, Pink, do you remember what other ones he was in? Uh, he would have been 2K19 and 2K20. I think he was out by 2K22, along with everybody else except for Kyle O'Reilly. Yep, he's Kyle O'Reilly is such an odd duck in 2K22, it's pretty funny. Yeah. You know I don't know if I, I even know that one. I'm still here. None of my stable mates are, but I'm still here. <laughs> still here. Oh my god. <laughs> With a voice like that, I can see why they would have got rid of him. <laughs> that reminds me, every now and then Jim Cornette will be talking about, like, he'll, 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 like, throw out a hypothetical. And, and he'll be talking about like like somebody who's easily dismissed, such as this guy, for example. And, and he'll be like, "Yeah, I, I don't know, Pismo. Like like Pismo. <laughs> they didn't keep him around, and with a name like Pismo, why would they?" <laughs> Pismo. That, that that's a really good to me at least. That's a very good like generic. This person's a nobody, and they never will be anything else. Pismo. <laughs> hmm. I think Pink actually quite likes Kyle O'Reilly, and I think Cornette does too. Oh, I definitely enjoyed Kyle O'Reilly. He was my favorite of the group by far. Uh, is that counting Roderick Strong in the group or not? Uh, not counting Roderick Strong. Not, and not so I guess I have to count Roderick, Roderick Strong, Roderick Strong Mark, Undisputed but... Era, but I was forgetting about that. You guys both just talked over each other. <laughs> oh, I was just saying, uh, not to say that I think you're a big Roderick Strong, Mark, though I suppose you could be. But just because there's the confusion there of like, okay, well, Undisputed Era sometimes didn't have Roddy and sometimes did. Yeah. Oh, Undisputed Era, that's the name of a tag team then? A stable? Yeah, the faction. The faction. That yeah. consisted of Cole, O'Reilly, uh, Bobby Fish, and then Roderick Strong eventually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know most of these people. I mean, that's not a, you know, that's that, of course, makes sense, being that I don't watch, but... Yeah, they were all uh, Ring of Honor guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they still, I guess, okay, who who is about to face, which someone is going to face Cody Rhodes in a minute for the title, like at the next pay-per-view or whatever, I guess it's being built? Is that uh, Sokoa? The Ghost of Umanga. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Once we run out of Samoans, they will just start using ghosts. Uh, currently, the Samoans are fighting in and amongst themselves. Eh, I don't know how I feel about that. So are there, like, two bloodlines, then? Or, or is it going to be they're fighting amongst themselves, and then once Roman comes back, then it's like, oh, now we're the United bloodline again, that kind of thing. 
Uh, Roman I mean, I is back. He's fighting against the uh, bloodline that's been hijacked mm. away from him. Oh. So then that ultimately means he's just going to eventually... So so it's... It, it, uh, because I'm looking for a reason to complain about the bloodline, basically this comes down to everyone's fighting to determine who gets to control the bloodline, right? It, it's still, well, I want to be the leader. No, I want to be the leader, right? Uh, the tribal chief, is that what's still going on? Yeah, it's uh, Solo, like, when Roman can't went out, Solo perverted it, and now Solo's just fully said, you know, I've replaced Roman, I am the new tribal chief. Roman came back, he uh, helped Cody for a little bit to fight off Solo, and then pretty well Roman oh. nodded. Roman nodded at Cody to kind of indicate, like, I've got bigger problems now, and I respect that you beat me, yada, yada, yada. Now I need to deal with these family issues. You hold on to that belt, more or less, right? Hmm. Hold on to it long enough for Rocky to come back and get it next year, and then the WrestleMania will be Roman against The Rock, thus making, making Cody a lame duck, which is what I'm getting the impression of. I feel like Cody's... I never hear anything about Cody ever anymore. It's just always I love Cody, stuff. but Cody's the sort of guy who strikes me as uh, the he, the better chaser, right? Well, not just the better chaser, but Cody strikes me as the type who books himself like a mark. Really? Yeah. How, how so, so? So far, it's been match against AJ Styles with no feud. It's a cold match, and oh. it's just supposed to be. Well, it's gonna be a five star match. Aren't you excited? No. Um, and then afterwards. Actually. Versus Kevin Owens, and they didn't even turn Kev heel. So it's Babyface versus Babyface. Kev's not been exciting in years. I love Kev, but his knees are bad, and he can't go like he used to. And it's like, well, aren't you excited? This is going to be a five-star match. Look at these two Ring of Honor legends. You know, which Cody was barely there in Ring of Honor, but nonetheless. And it's like, no. I love Cody. Whoa. Love Kev. No, I'm not excited. <laughs> I, I now, now, here's, you know, me being cynical. Is it that Cody is booking himself into these situations, or is it just that that's all they can think up to give to Cody because all their focus is otherwise on the bloodline stuff? I, well, I don't have a uh, sight line to the backstage, but... Well, yeah. I mean, but you, you, you watch, though, and I don't, so I don't know how much of this is more apparent than other stuff. To me, it's simply knowing Cody and knowing how Cody wants to be approved of and thought of, you know? Okay. So you think he's pushing for this stuff like, hey, put me with this guy. He's really good. We can have a great match. You think it's more about that? Yeah, I think it's that Cody is perhaps not as bad as Kenny Omega or the Bucks. Or, well, even Kenny himself is now smart-ass at the five-star match idea. But yeah. Cody strikes me as a little bit of the sort of guy who thinks that you honestly determine your quality as a wrestler based off how many five-star matches you have in your repertoire. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wonder if that was cultivated before AEW or if he really started to get that mentality, if that is his mentality, if that really came along with uh, the AEW territory. Yeah, I don't know that I'd say AEW because he worked in New Japan and Ring of Honor before that, but I don't know. Cody was in Ring of Honor. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, only for a, only for a minute. It was, yeah, it, first major promotion he went to after he uh, left the WWE. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. That must have been so fast, I just, you know, by it the time was, I caught up, it was... Yeah, in a flash, and uh, Ring of Honor probably would have gone under a couple years later. Huh. They, they were not doing great at that time. They're not doing super good now. Well, now they're just the they AEW now. show. They're, uh, yeah, they're part of AEW's umbrella, and Tony Khan forgets about it all the time. Yeah, like, he hired it for the legacy of having Ring of Honor there, and so that he could have uh. Jericho win the Ring of Honor belt, because Jericho being Jericho said... Hey man, I think it'd be really cool, man, if I won Ring of Honor, the Ring of Honor Championship, you know, Tony. Yeah, that, that's about what I hear. I, I hear that he's uh, well, the, the usual stuff. But uh, more than anything, though, I've been hearing about, uh, and I love this because uh, even though I think she's hot, I think uh, I, I think she's a bitch. Uh, what's her name? Mercedes Monet, whatever her yeah. real name is. I guess her real name is Mercedes. I think. Mercedes um, Monado. Is that what it is? is, is <laughs> Is she Puerto Rican? Uh, half. Half Puerto Rican, okay. Half Puerto Rican and half black? Yes, uh, so okay. her, her uh, cousin is Snoop, remember? That's what made me think that, actually, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think she's, uh, I mean, again, I know that you guys made it clear that I'm abundantly alone on this, but uh, I think she's really cute, but uh, I, I cannot I don't bring myself really to really mind Sasha one way or the other. However, like, you gotta keep in mind, we're in the call with the number one Sasha Banks hater of all time. Yeah. 
Look at you, pink. Oh, I don't I'm think there's any shame title. in that. I think he's happy that I just called him that. <laughs> <laughs> that just boosted my ego. If, if you one know? day it was announced on the news that Sasha Banks had been hit by a runaway semi, spluttered into chunks, <laughs> then sprayed across the nearby uh, bystanders, Pink would only say, should have happened sooner. That's pretty <laughs> bad. There is a monologue that a character has in Deadpool and Wolverine filled with vulgarity about how much they hurt, hate a certain woman, and I think Pink could cut that fucking promo on Sasha Banks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember in my mind, I can just hear Pink saying, if the last thing I do when this godforsaken cum gutter of a fucking existence is husk fuck her burned corpse, then I still won't die happy. Jeez. <laughs> and, and all that just because she's approved. a bitch and she... <laughs> all that because she's, she's a bitch and not the best wrestler that she claims to be. All that just because of that or was there more? I don't recall. It's also just that. Okay. Well, you know, I, I ate Steve Austin. So, you know, fair enough. She, uh, I, I don't know. She, I, just whenever I hear about her, it, it sounds like she's making just very, maybe not like overly arrogant comments, but it seems like she really is a little bit high on herself. And I guess just all that, the whole thing that she's always done of like, you know, just like standing there with her, like pointing to herself and with her fingers holding up her stupid big gaudy rings that say the boss. And it's just so fucking dumb. I don't know. But I don't know. I, I I know that I know that she's skinny and like really really on the small kind of skinny side. And I know that that's like the opposite of what you guys like. But in addition to that, I think that you said that you find her face ugly as well. I don't. I think that she's really cute. But anyway, all that aside, um, she just strikes me as just a I don't know. She just seems like a bitch. And whenever uh, Cornette's talking about her, it seems like she's made another another comment that that, that seems to make it seem that way. They're uh, Cornette and Brian. They're they're very very anti fans of her, and I think that's amusing. Now that you put Cornette against her, Pink's gonna be yeah. Mixed. I don't argue with Cornette. This is <laughs> terrible. Oh yeah, he he just straight up just called her a bitch the other day. He he was like, yeah, you know, she's who this stupid bitch. She just comes out there and like she's comes out with all this crap that's no not good. She can't wrestle for shit. She's high on herself and well, you know all, all all the all the good stuff. So yeah, yeah, you and Cornette are in lockstep on this one. Yeah, that, which means that now that Pink agrees with him on everything, so let's go ahead and call Pink out on the fact that he said Naomi has no right to complain about being... Se oh, not Naomi, uh, Amber Moon has no right to complain about being uh, sexualized. What's the story there? Oh, it was, like a, it was like a year or two ago, Amber Moon said that she left WWE because John Laurinaitis was telling her, you need to sex it up, you need to be sexy, yada, yada, yada. Oh. Of and course. Amber oh, yeah, and then she left the company and wore less on the independent circuit. That was <laughs> But... I'll have to look into that. I'm, I might have to find those pictures for educational purposes, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> when she said that uh, Cornette, who has in the past taken women's sides when they've said they didn't want to be sexualized and they just want to be wrestlers, but nonetheless, when she said that, uh, uh, Cornette said, Oh, fuck you, you fucking bitch, you fucking worthless <laughs> fucking bitch, motherfucker. Goddamn motherfucker, if I pay you my fucking payroll, then motherfucker, you will do what I ask you to, motherfucker, if I tell you wear a fucking bikini, motherfucking bitch, bitch, fucking bitch, then motherfucking bitch, you will go out and you will fucking dance if I tell you to, bitch. <laughs> is this a recent thing? No, this was like a year ago. This was one of the main okay. things that disgusted me so much I just stopped watching him for... Uh, you know, I... <sighs> I, I, uh, man, you know, I, I'd have to, I'd have to hear what he said about it specifically, but I, obviously, you can find I'm, I'm him sure. Entertaining without thinking he's a good person. Well, no, no, no. I, that's not even where I'm going. Is is that I'm trying to figure out where I would stand on this because I, I, I think that both sides have merit. I think that, you know, it, it is shitty to, 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 you know, to, to try and tell a woman, hey, you know, put on this, you know, skippy outfit and dance around, you know. But at the same time that you you can't go into wrestling right now or at least at that time it, it's obviously changed a lot in the last like five ten years but five years let's say um you know you can't really go into wrestling and, and not see that that's exactly what the product is like like i, I you know I, I i i find it kind of questionable that you would say oh well don't you know sexualize we are objectify me like how long have you been an employee how long have you like been aware of wwe's existence since like I don't know, like like ninety eight onward. Like it's a surprise to you that they want you to wear a bikini, really? 
Yeah. I'm Here's not saying it's right. Where, yeah, it's not right, but you, you should understand, and this goes for both genders, act, actually. You should understand that going into this business, it is a very looks-based, uh, sexuality kind of based mm -hmm. business, where pretty privilege is definitely a thing. I mean, look at who the women's champion is right now, Nia Jax. It's great. Oh, good lord. And then... <laughs> There's something and then, great and then we got about Cooper as this... world heavyweight champion. There, there's something great ahead, about Al. the what you two do, where Mike will go, well, Sasha Banks, she's skinny, and you know I like that, but all oh, apparently it's the end of the world that she's skinny. Oh, you you fucking pricks. And it, you know, it, it, it's but then like go when ahead, Nia Jax comes up, Mike and Mike's response is like, oh, good lord, yeah, sure, she's pretty. You fucking chubby loving ch piece of shit pink <laughs> i i i i while i do think that i obviously it's very subjective i i i, oh, I, I forgot I do... she's small and there we go no no it's well now that you remind me of that that's even less reason for me to like her but but no it, it it's it's the whole nepotism thing it, it's that she's suddenly getting pushed to the moon now that rock is you know just what odd timing that the rock came back and now suddenly she's women's champion at the same time that rock's daughter is also like whatever nxt leader or whatever the fuck it is well, there's also fucking him getting, you know, put into the Hall of Fame with his dad, or having his dad put in the Hall of, Hall of Fame, while Muhammad Ali gives him a special belt, and just, it's like, it's just so fucking transparent. And that's not Nia Jax's fault, but when I combine that with the fact that I personally don't like her body shape, which is neither here nor there, but it's just like, okay, well... It comes down to I don't like I don't like her looks. I don't like the fact that she's you know getting advantages because of her because of her background. I don't like the fact that you know she probably should have been gotten rid of a long time ago when she fucking busted a bunch of people with with bad uh, botched moves. It's just like why like when I think about her, it's not even just like Ugh, she's ugly. No, it, her face is actually pretty. I don't like her body shape, but her face is pretty. But when I think about her, and I'm just like oh fuck that. It's really just more the whole package of what Nia Jax represents than than her actual appearance. Okay, Pink, do you want to let, let loose on that promo, or do you just want to move on? <laughs> Whenever you say stuff like, we could just move on, that, that, that suggests to me that, that I won't let you guys have a word in to say your side. And I don't want that to be the case. I want you to be well, able to I don't know if defend what you defend. He wants there to be an argument. <laughs> That's what I mean, though. I, I don't want there to be an argument. I don't want you to think that just by saying the things that you like, I'm going to argue with you. And if that's the case, I definitely want to change that. I don't see it as an argument. It's like, you have your opinion and I have mine. There's not really getting past that or changing any perspectives that we have. Uh, do, do, you, do you disagree on the nepotism and uh, 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 botch uh, issues? Uh, and if yes, you do, that you do. I, I, I'm legitimately. I, I want to hear what you have to say. I would say, well, I'm just trying to figure out a way to tie Braun Breaker into all this so I can bury him, but I can't. But <laughs> I, I don't think that they've been giving Nia Jax her current opportunities based on nepotism. Nor do I think they hired her back based on nepotism because I don't. What well, it was hard to say because I don't know what the exact timeline for bringing. Dwayne back in was to begin with anyway. But I think uh, while it's possible that the backstage booking does take into account that she is related to The Rock, I don't think that's the main thing in play here. It's kind of a Michelle McCool Undertaker situation at most where I doubt Undertaker back in the day was going backstage and saying, hey, give my wife all the belts and all the screen time. But the fact that she no, was his wife that. definitely influenced. She's skinny and she's yeah, blonde. Give her all the belts. <laughs> Is that actually <laughs> what happened with her? That, but, did did uh, yeah. McCool actually get a bunch of? Did, was she actually that awarded? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. I, I was. I absolutely say yes. I absolutely say yes. She uh, was definitely was one of the more decorated he... divas, but it was also the divas era, and like Michelle McCool is no fucking, you know, Vern Gagne, Bret Hart, but you know. Oh, I'm the, sure. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, and uh, Michelle McCool was closer to one-eyed than blind. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, she was better <laughs> than Ashley Massaro, God rest her soul. Oh, I forget about that. She's the one who killed herself, right? Yes. Uh, yes, very tragic uh, circumstances. Bad yeah. wrestler, but still yes. very tragic circumstances. Right. Yes. 
Yeah, you don't you don't want to hear about any wrestlers dying, let alone killing themselves. Was she? What? How long has it been since another wrestler killed himself? It's pretty uh, rare, Daphne? isn't it? D- didn't Daphne kill herself? Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot that she was even dead. That poor girl. Wow. Yeah. I think you're right. I think she did. I don't know the story be- be- behind that one. Other than that, I mean, when's the last time a male wrestler killed himself? Oh, that's a good question. Would it have uh, been? I, would it have been Canyon? When did Canyon die? Yeah, I don't know that 20, one. 2011, 2012, thereabouts, I think. No, like 2007. No, it was 2007 when he came out of the closet. I think it was when he came out of the closet. That sounds right. That sounds closer to uh, what I recall. But uh, did uh, Sean O'Hare? Did he not kill himself? Oh, he did. Yeah, you're right. Mm. He did. I forgot about that one, too. I think that was a few years. Uh, I, that's the most recent one I can remember, personally. He was big around seven ish I don't eight, mean, right? mean, but he was never big. No, well, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, uh, yeah. I know they paired him with, I think, Roddy Piper, and he yes, had, like, a... that was a... in early uh, 2000... Two, two thousand three. Oh, it was that old shit. Okay, that's way back then. Okay, wow. Wasn't I thought it was like Roddy five Piper or six. What killed the Devil's Advocate gimmick? Yes, because uh, Roddy Piper left the company abruptly, or did something with the company abruptly, and uh, that that left uh, Sean O'Hare to kind of be exiled to no man's land, as uh, Piper w- had he. Yeah, Piper had heat with the company, and they weren't going to use him, unless, or he was even gone completely, I don't remember. And uh, Sean O'Hare was then left without his gimmick, and never got used after that, and then released shortly thereafter. Good lord. We don't... D- d- is there any evidence that, that he killed himself because of that? Because he was let go? Like, like does anyone know? I doubt he- it, because that was several years apart. Okay. Because that was the early 2000s, and I think uh, Sean O'Hare, uh, I think he passed away in 2014. Oh, way later, okay. So, more he... likely something like addiction. That usually is the case. Yeah. So, uh, taking a step back before the McCool thing, uh, you were talking about Nia Jax, and uh, you, you were saying the nepotism probably isn't a thing, but then uh, the the botching. What was your comment on that, or what was your opinion on that? Uh, the botching, I don't think is as big a deal as the internet makes it out to be. Oh, dude, uh, I just looked up Sean O'Hare. He was from, uh... no, he died in Spartanburg, South Carolina. All right. Born in Atlanta, Georgia. And yes, he did pass away in 2014, so I was right on the year there. Yeah, that's a while. But uh, I would have to actually go back historically to look at all the uh, injuries allegedly caused by Nia Jax, because there's obviously the infamous breaking Becky Lynch's face open, which is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. I, I don't say that as as something to be mean about. I mean that with a uh, legitimate. It made uh, Becky's career. It did. Yeah, it did, yeah. which is actually really kind of corny. That was. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm injured, so now I'm the man. Shut up! No, you're not. You you got a nosebleed. It happens. He was the man before that, but yeah, that. Oh, is that true? Us. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought that's exactly where that came from. Okay, I did not know that. They just they just leaned into it harder when she got when she got the the nose broke or whatever. Like she's a tough guy. Uh, what happened with that was, uh, very, very happy. We should all be thinking Nia Jax for everything right now. But, uh, <laughs> Survivor Series was going to be a couple weeks after that initial brawl. And originally it was set to be Champion versus Champion, SmackDown versus Raw. So that would have seen Becky Lynch take on Ronda Rousey at Survivor Series. And because Becky Lynch got her face broken by an eye jacks and a concussion or whatever, I don't think she was actually concussed. It's just, well, I don't know. I'd have to look at that. But we'll say concussion. We'll say she was concussed and could not wrestle at the Survivor Series PLE or pay per view. It would have been at the time, I think. Uh, no, they've all used some PLEs for since the network dropped. But regardless, she would not able to compete at Survivor Series, which prevented her from being able to uh, face Ronda Rousey 
which ultimately held that off until WrestleMania of that year or the following year. My timetable is a bit off on that. So, okay. yeah, that <laughs> basically uh, that basically put one of the bigger WrestleMania main events on hold for an actual WrestleMania rather than just Survivor Series. Where they would have had Rooster go over for no reason and kill all Becky's momentum, which would have yep, sucked. almost certainly the plan. Yep. That was how Vince yep. did things back in that day. Yep. Baby Wait, say that again. One... Thank. Say what again? Talk about the oh. who, who was gonna get. Uh, I I I got. I, I was a little bit sidetracked because I thought you said Rooster. Did I hear you correctly? Uh, about Ron, yes. Ron Rousey? Yes. That's he Rooster. uses that as an Ron insult on top Veranda. Yeah. Which is perfectly fine, but what's the okay? Since I was correct about that, then uh, can you can you repeat what you said about her at the end there? What was going on with her? They were going to do what? They were going to have Becky and Ronda face off at Survivor Series, and almost assuredly, Ronda was going to go over. And how dare you, Alex? Ronda was going to go over, obviously, because she was going over everybody at the time. Mm. And since it was going to be a champion versus champion match, it's a Survivor Series. Well, why not just have Ronda take that too? <laughs> I see. Yeah, Alex, are you okay over there? Yeah. No, I he's not. Take, I need to take the cat to her. I need to take the cat and feed her because she's just getting really angry and just starting to. She keeps jumping up in my and digging her claws into my leg or into my back. Oh. I could see where that would hurt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I guess I'll cut this recording then. Oh.